Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Rare Gaming Today Production video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which as usual has popped up the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to begin this video with the RX 6800 XT, as a series of benchmarks have actually leaked onto the internet. And it's looking very positive for AMD's next generation cards. Now, allegedly, these results are from an AIB who creates not only AMD GPUs, but also NVIDIA GPUs. So these are apparently internal benchmarks and have been sent to numerous different outlets and folks. We'll get into who in just a moment. But the reason this is so important is because it's the 6800 XT, not the 6900 XT. The 6900 XT features 80 compute units, whereas the 6800 XT features just 72. And um, apparently the 6800 XT is going to be an AMD exclusive. I covered this uh, quite extensively a few days ago, but the reason that this is so important is because it does mean that AMD do have a faster card in the offering. So let's first of all discuss results which Igor's lab has received. We'll go over all of the results really quickly and then we'll do an in-depth analysis. So Igor's lab has received results for Firestrike Extreme 4K, Time Spy Extreme 4K, as well as Port Royal. And if we look at the results here, specifically from a percentage benchmark, we can indeed see that in Firestrike in particular, the FE does significantly worse, that is the 38, the 3080 FE, significantly worse in Firestrike Extreme, but Time Spy, it's essentially on par, you know, a couple of percent difference. Um, unfortunately, we don't have complete... Um, system specifications here so we don't know at least to my knowledge anyway the driver revisions which are being used it is apparently an engineering sample board for amd so there are still quite a few moving pieces to this and it is possible that these results were conducted on different systems and that type of thing but that's why i'm going to say that for time spy extreme they are essentially identical because that is definitely within margin of error but regardless both of these gpus of course do ruffle stomp the 2080 ti founders edition port royal this also does seem to indicate that all of my information from previously that the rdna2 architecture does very well with traditional rasterization performance but in terms of ray tracing it is behind ampere because here we can indeed see that with the 6800 xt at 100 percent uh we are looking at 22 percent improvement for a, yes 22 percent improvement for ampere with the 6800 xt slightly slightly nodging out the fe founds the edition card for the 2080 and then uh, wccf tech have also see uh, also excuse me received a slew of results again i'll link all of this stuff in the video description i won't go through all of their numbers because they're on screen uh, but Basically, we are looking at almost exactly the same results here that Igor has shared in terms of percentages. So that is definitely a positive thing. Cap Frame X is a developer of a benchmarking utility. It's pretty cool. I haven't really checked it out too much, to be honest, but to my understanding, it's pretty cool. And here we have results of Firestrike Ultra. Big Nave is um, beating the RTX 3080. And Kitty Y Yuko, um, who used to be Kitty Corgi, has also provided benchmarks, um, and they have also apparently been confirmed too. And this is for a Narva 21 uh, XT sample. Um, but there's kind of something kind of weird here because they are stating that it's for the XT sample, which features 80 compute units, but that doesn't seem to make sense because to what our understanding is, um, it's the XTX variant which has 80, but either way, there might be some confusion, but what we do know is that um, the scores here um, were actually compiled by Harakazi, uh, 5719. They actually do a really good job of putting these things into uh, graphs and stuff. They frequently do this stuff, so, you know, full credit to them for that. 
and you can indeed see the results um, of Time Spy and other applications and how they are scaling. And again, I won't read out all of these, but there are a couple of very interesting ones to me. Uh, Time Spy, it seems that the uh, engineering sample of the Narve 21 is hitting 1600, sorry, 16,700, which is obviously about on par again with the 16,939 of the RTX 3080. But in some applications, such as Firestrike Ultra, Narve 21 is ahead, and in Firestrike Extremes it seems to be even further ahead, but in Time Spy Extreme it's further behind. Now, personally, I think this makes a ton of sense, because if you've been watching the channel for any length of time, and you've been watching a lot of my RDNA 2 leaks, you'll know that one of the things I did say is that you're going to need to look at benchmarks, and by what, what what I meant by that, as I explained in that video, is that it's going to really be down to a case-by-case -case basis of which um, card is ahead in terms of what application. So how it was explained to me is in game one, AMD might, might pull out a semi-convincing win or be ahead by just a few percent, but in a different application, it could be the reverse. And I'm hearing through the grapevine that NVIDIA have been very confident about their um, ray tracing advantage, as well as things like DLSS. So it's going to be a very interesting set of decisions that people will need to make. And another reason we could be seeing the results here um, as they are is the Infinity Cache. And I'm saying this with a lot of ignorance, so if in three, five days' time I turn out to be totally wrong, forgive me, but this is just what I'm kind of speculating based upon what I'm told. I'm told that some applications, and some uh, applications in particular when they go to higher resolutions, don't scale so well with the Infinity Cache architecture. Because remember, the Infinity Cache essentially utilizes the 256-bit bus of the GPU um, with GDDR6 memory, but the Infinity Cache itself is a large chunk of memory on the GPU, and that obviously helps to essentially buffer the lacking bandwidth on the GPU itself. Now, I will be extremely extremely, <laughs> extremely curious to test this out in person. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I, I just really want to test this card out in a plethora of different applications and usage scenarios. It really excites me. Um, and it's not just because of desktop. I mean, desktop is cool, and it's my preferred platform, as regular viewers know, but the reason I'm interested about this as well is because other potential usage scenarios like small form factor PCs, APUs, and scalability there is extremely exciting. And there are a ton of different potentials for this. Um, and, you know, I, I think this architecture, uh, I was told for quite a long time that NVIDIA's architecture is very powerful, but AMD's is very scalable. And that's what RDNA 2 had been crafted for, scalability. And obviously, as we were learning um, from video cards leak the other day in terms of specs, which basically tallied up perfectly with the information that I've been leaking to you guys for a while now, if you look at the number of compute units, um, it basically scales down because... Um, but the actual memory configuration is identical between the 6900 XT, the 6800 XT, and the 6800. We are looking at basically the same memory configuration, the only difference being clock frequencies in CU. So as you're um, reducing the number of CU, the Infinity Cache um, obviously gets smaller, clock frequencies also diminish, which means that the Infinity Cache performance is also lower, which scales perfectly. Well, I don't know about perfectly. That's something we'll have to test. But it scales relative to the number of compute units and the workload. It's a very ingenious solution. At least, I think it's pretty ingenious. Um, and I am a really big fan of NVIDIA's Ampere architecture. 
I um, need to be careful how I say that because uh, I'm under some NDAs. But um, yeah, I, I'm really uh, I'm really excited what AMD are going to be bringing to the table as well. I think this is going to be an amazing time for gamers. I truly do. I think this is going to be an absolute stellar lineup for gamers because if you're a console gamer, you're obviously set with next generation consoles, but on desktop, holy crap, we've got some options. Uh, for me, personally, the 5900 is super exciting as the CPU, but also the 5600 XT. I, I, think, there's a, I think there's going to be an awful lot of bang for buck pairing like a 5600 XT with whatever GPU, whether that's the 3070, when we get benchmarks for it, um, or the you know RX 6000 series, whichever direction you want to go, I think that's going to be a really great time for gamers. I also want to touch on a leaked PCB, which has also leaked out onto the internet. The image was actually leaked by EB-18, uh, but it seems, at least I'm looking now, and it doesn't see... I'm, I'm actually just going to double-check. Yes, the image is definitely nuked, so I don't know why they've chosen to remove that, but uh, obviously they have. It's a bit late now because the um, image has started to go around the, the you know, the uh the world so it doesn't really matter but we do have what appears to be an engineering sample board and we can indeed see a couple of very interesting things the first is that i just want to stress this is an engineering sample board so things could definitely change the you know the final board could be pink and have one you know memory module for we know in the end but um the vrms themselves it looks like we're looking at a 16 phase power delivery and i think this is going to be critical for a couple of different reasons the first is that these cards are going to be around the 300 watt mark i'm told it might be a little bit less than that for some models but others may be a bit higher so i'm just going to say 300 ish watts but even outside the power um, requirements, you also need to take into consideration that these GPUs are going to be running at very high clock frequencies too. And I don't know enough about the architecture to say this in complete confidence, so there is a lot of ignorance in what I'm about to say. But I do think that the way these GPUs are designed, clean power delivery is probably going to be very important. Um, I don't believe that uh, you want to cheap out on power delivery or any of the cooling of the GPUs. In fact, in my digging around, one of the reasons I'm hearing that the 6900 XT was not given to AIBs is AMD wanted to basically make sure that the cards were really high quality and basically really control those GPUs, um, especially when it came to the, you know, the overall build quality and component selection, like VRMs and stuff. I don't know if that's true, so I'm not reporting it as a fact. That Just consider that uh, it might be true or an interesting theory. Please don't feel that that's 100% true. I am not certain. It's just, let's just call it some whispers. But back to what I was saying, the power delivery for this is going to be very important because obviously when you're running a chip at such high frequencies um when you get clean power uh, obviously the the whole purpose of uh, phases is to convert whatever voltage which is going into the gpu and then convert those rails into a usable voltage for the various components on the board so for example if the pure pure example numbers but if the memory requires 1.2 volts and the GPU core is 1.3 again I'm just pulling those figures out on my butt you then need to convert whatever power is coming in so let's say that's 12 volt rails you need to convert that but you also need to deliver the power consistently because obviously the number of phases directly um directly influences how smooth the power delivery is so that's why one of the reasons that uh, high-end uh, cpus will have a large number of phases i actually went into this quite extensively in with an interview with um, a couple of engineers over at msi so there's a 
there's a video on the channel, I don't remember what it's called, but you could search for MSI interview if you so desire and it'll pop right up. So we go into that rather extensively. So I do believe that this is one of the reasons that we're seeing AMD engineer their GPUs the way they are. But getting back to the rest of this stuff, because I'm this video is already getting kind of long at this point, um, it seems like there is a 256-bit bus. Um, from what we can see, there's no like memory chips or anything like that on board, which would, of course, provide some insight into clock frequencies, possibly, that would be obtained by those memory modules. But with that said, the ES, the engineering sample board, does look to be uh, pretty solid, ma solidly made. I'm having one of those days I can't speak. And, yeah, um... The last thing I'd like to discuss for AMD is the Ryzen 5 5600X, as it is now the fastest CPU in CPU mark. Yup, that's right, it has taken out every single other CPU on the list. It's beaten the 10900K, the 10900F, 9900K, everything. It's just dominated every single one, and not by a small amount either. It's scoring essentially 3,500 points compared to around 3,200 points of the 10900K. So that is, well, let's just say substantial. It's way over 20% faster than the Zen 2 equivalents. So this thing is absolutely screaming. And I do think that there's a very good chance that a ton of people are going to want to purchase this particular processor um, when it comes to the upgrade, obviously they do need to ensure that their motherboard will take the uh, chip. But if you've got like a like a twenty six hundred something like that, twenty six hundred X, I think that um, if you are looking to buy like one of these new GPUs, like let's say the sixty eight hundred or equivalent, you would be better off buying one of these things because. The 3080 and other such GPUs, you know, anything around that class is just, you're going to just be essentially throwing performance away uh, if you cannot feed it enough um, data. And something like even an RTX 2080 Ti is really fast. But a 3080, and I'm just using that as like, you know, 6800 XT is essentially the same class. Yeah, I, I think that uh, to really take advantage of one of these things, at 1440p, the 3080 is even on a 10900K, it sometimes doesn't even hit, like, more than 60-70% GPU usage. On something like Doom Eternal, I I often had times where the GPU was just like, la 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 um, and at 4K, you know, that's, that's kind of more like it. Speaking of NVIDIA, there is one last thing I would like to discuss. Copity 7 Kimi, they actually were very accurate uh, in the past. They leaked a large amount of specs for Ampere. This is months before the cards were formally announced by NVIDIA or anything like that. And he's now claiming that there's going to be a new card based on GA102. And they're claiming that it has 7,424 uh, FP32 units on a 320-bit bus. Unfortunately, we do not have full specifications of this card, but it would sit between the 3080 and the 3070 in terms of uh, CUDA cores. Obviously, again, we don't know the specifications of uh, the card in terms of clock frequencies and that type of thing, but um, assuming we're looking at a vaguely similar clock frequency and they haven't drastically nerfed the clocks of the memory, this thing should still perform very well. It will definitely be faster than the RTX 3070, which is looking to be a very fast card, but um, it will probably be that card that I think a lot of people will go for if they're looking for like 4K gaming and maybe don't want to spend 699 for the 3080, or if you want high refresh rate 1440p gaming and you're looking for just a little more headroom than the RTX 3070, I imagine it will sell extremely well. Now, this card is rumoured, and there have been also some rumours that NVIDIA have, are, are cancelling the launch of both the 3080 20GB and the 3070 16GB. Now, I have been doing some digging on this, and one of my sources has told me that they believe that this is true. 
because videocards.com actually reported this first, but I actually heard about it a couple of days prior to this, but my source told me that they were very uncertain if it was true. Fast forward, and they are now telling me that they believe it possibly is true, but they're quite puzzled because they are telling me that NVIDIA, to their knowledge, and it could be wrong, but they told me that they are pretty sure that NVIDIA do have the memory chips to actually make the 20 gigabyte model, so they're not certain why they ended up cancelling the uh, 20 gigabyte 3080 and the 16 gigabyte 3070, but they think that they're cancelled, but they're not 100%. They believe they are. So whether this is to release like entirely different cards or whether it was for an entirely different reason, I don't know. Interestingly, I did ask them if the TSMC 7NM rumor is true, and they also told me that they don't believe that is true um, because it would likely be, you know, kind of later next year that that would happen. I don't honestly know myself. I can't verify whether it is or is not true um, with the TSMC rumor. I personally don't think it is uh, because um, I think that this 7NM uh, TSMC process and 8NM uh, Samsung process are pretty incompatible. So it would be quite a lot of work to do the redesign unless it was being designed from the ground up anyway or they're going for quite a different design on the 7NM. Who knows? Um, I mean, Digitimes, who I believe reported the, st the story uh, first, they are pretty accurate. So, I mean, who knows? It's possible, though, that the refresh, or if there is a refresh of these GPUs, which will launch in, let's say, six or nine months or whatever, maybe that's on TSMC's 7NM process. But there's definitely a lot of confusion. Either way, um, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. The normal stuff, if you did, like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you soon. Thanks very much. Take care. Bye for now.